This video is going to be talking about adding and subtracting integers using arrows and chips to teach the concept. It's a cool way to think about these. Okay, so first we're going to talk about integers with arrows. I'm going to give you the rules first and then we'll talk about how it applies in the different problems. So for arrows, if the arrows are pointing in different directions, you're going to subtract the two numbers. And the longer arrow's sign will be the sign of the answer. Once again, you might want to write these rules down or screenshot it and just have it available as you're working these out. So when the arrows are the same direction, you're going to add the two, air, the two values. And the answer sign is the sign of what both of those numbers are. So here we go. We're going to do a few of these. So we have a number line. And we've got negative 9 plus 4. Now you can also think of this as 9 negatives and 4 positives. What we're going to do is start at 0. And since our first number is negative 9, that means we're going to go left. Left is a negative direction. So we're going to go left 9. And then from there, we're going to apply the positive 4, which would be right 4. So, we're going to go ahead and end up at negative 5. Now, basically, we're going to go through this. So, the arrows went in different directions, and the longer arrow was the negative number. That means the negative number has the larger absolute value, which means the larger absolute value, the team with the larger absolute value was the negatives. And so, your answer is going to be negative. That's why we have a negative 5. So we'll do another one. Negative 4 plus 7. You could think of it as 4 negatives, 7 positives. If we're moving the arrow on the number line, that would be from 0, you'd go left 4. And then from there, you'd go right 7. And you'd end up at 3. So your answer is a positive 3. So once again, the arrows were in different directions, so we subtracted the two values. So the longer arrow was the positive number this time, so the positive number had the larger absolute value. And then your sign of your answer was positive. So hopefully this trick's making sense. We're going to go through a few more of these. We've got negative 5, positive 5, or negative 5, plus 5. Starting at 0, we go left 5, and then from there you'd go right 5. So you're ending up back at 0. This, the arrows were exactly the same. They were in different directions, but they were exactly the same, so they canceled each other out. If you remember your properties, this is actually an example of the additive inverse property. Four minus five. Or you can think of it as four positives, five negatives. So let's see, we're gonna go right four, then left five. So we're gonna go right four, left five, and we're gonna end up at negative one. So in this one, the arrows went in different directions. The negatives had the larger absolute value. So the answer was negative. So different arrows, you did actually five minus four, ended up at one. And then it's negative since there were more negatives. It had the larger absolute value. Here's another one. 7 minus 4. Would these arrows be going in the same or different directions? If you think about it, you're actually going to subtract these values. Now this hopefully isn't a big deal. This is like something you've been doing for a while. But let's do the visual. Right 7 and then left 4. So you'd end up at 3. 7 had the larger absolute value, so it's a positive number, so the answer's positive. 6 minus 6. Would those arrows be in the same or different directions? Positive 6, negative 6. So that's right 6, negative 6. The arrows are different directions, so you really subtract it. Once again, hopefully this one wasn't a big deal. It's like stuff you've been doing since elementary school. All right, negative 3 minus 4. You can also think of it as 3 negatives and 4 negatives. 
So a negative 3 would be left 3, and then a negative 4 would be left 4. So you're going left, then left. You're going deep into the negative zone. So you end up at negative 7. So in this case, if you, you have three negatives, four negatives, arrows going the same direction, you would add the values. This used to drive me crazy when I was a kid because you're adding three and four, but nowhere in here do you see a plus sign. That used to drive me crazy when I was a kid. But three negatives, four negatives, you total up your negatives. The arrows are in the same direction, you're adding the values. That's a tough concept. Negative two minus seven, or two negatives, seven negatives. The moves we make are gonna be left two and left seven. So once again, these arrows are in the same direction. You'd add the values and you'll end up at negative nine. You keep the negative sign. You went left two, left seven. That's a big left nine. It wouldn't all of a sudden turn into a positive number. All right, negative one minus four, the moves. Try it on your own for a sec. You can pause it if you need to. So that's gonna be left one, left four. Arrows went in the same direction. You're adding the values. So one plus four is five, and you have a bunch of negatives. So there you go. Five plus two, that's right five, right two, the arrows same direction, you add them, you end up at positive seven. A right and a right puts you far right. Now we're gonna talk about uh, chips. So this is a different way to represent the integers. If your chips are different colors, you're gonna line them up and you're gonna cancel out zero pairs. You'll see what a zero pair is in a moment. Leftover chips is the answer. So then when you talk about the same colors, you're just going to add up your chips, and your answer sign is the sign of the chips. Let's go ahead. You can screenshot this or write down notes. You can keep coming back to it. But this is the way the chips work. So we have negative 9 plus 4. Well, we're going to go ahead and say the red chips are negative. And we're going to line up nine negative chips. Then we're going to go ahead and get four positive chips. When you read it, when you read this problem all together, it's negative nine plus four. But when you focus on individual terms, you think of that as four positives. So I'm going to line up four positives. Now a zero pair occurs when you line up a single negative chip and a single positive chip. So there's a zero pair. There's another zero pair. So we had four zero pairs. What's left over? Five negative chips. So your answer is going to be negative five. It's kind of a different way of looking at it. We're going to go through a few more examples. Negative three plus seven. So that's three negative chips. That's seven positive chips. You're going to have three zero pairs and there's going to be some positives left over. So your answer is going to be four positives. This kind of goes with the same rule as the arrows. As soon as you see different teams, I think of the positives and negatives as teams. As soon as you see different teams represented, you're going to subtract their values. And then you go the one with the large, larger absolute value taking away the other guy. Or the one there's more of taking away the other guy. So that one works out to four. If we have negative three minus seven, well, that would be three negative chips and seven negative chips. Are there any zero pairs created to cancel out? There are none, there are no zero pairs. So all you need to do is count up the chips. Well, there's 10 ch chips there and it's a bunch of negative chips. So your answer is negative 10. Negative five plus eight. From here on out, if you wanna pause the video and figure it out on your own and then check it, that's what I'd recommend you do. 
you're going to have five negative chips, eight positive chips, and then you're going to have five zero pairs. And what's left over is the three positives. So your answer is three for this one. Nine plus four. Hopefully you know this one fairly quickly. Nine positive chips, four positive chips. There are no zero pairs, so you just add up your chips. So you have a bunch of blue positive chips, that's 13 positive chips. So that's your final answer for this one. Negative six plus five. We have six negative chips, five positive chips, and then we, we do have some zero pairs. We have one, two, three, four, five zero pairs, which leaves us with one negative chip left over. Four minus nine. Are you gonna add or subtract these values? Which team is there more of? We have nine negatives, four positives. How many zero pairs will there be? One, two, three, four. And then we have five negative chips left over. Sometimes a problem might not ask you to give the negative five. If they were asking how many zero pairs are there in this problem, you would say four. A couple years ago, there was a test question like that that messed with a lot of kids. In this problem, we have five negative chips, five positive chips. How many zero pairs would there be? And then what's the answer? Well, if we have five negatives, five positives, we're going to have five zero pairs. And that leaves you with nothing left over, so your answer is zero. So it's also the additive inverse property going on. Any number plus its opposite is making zero, that's the additive inverse property. Eight minus five, hopefully this one's not a big deal, but if you break it down, you have five negative chips, you have eight positive chips, you're gonna have five zero pairs with three positives left over. And that is it, hope this helps.